Julian Castro. Candidate number five. Hello, sir. How are you? Good to see you. Yes, you, your microphone is on you. Ah, Two minutes. <laughs> I was asking for a microphone, and the microphone is on me. It Two shows minutes. you we're losing our minds right now. <laughs> um, thank you very much, April, to your president, to the chairman. Uh, good morning. Uh, it is wonderful to be with you all here at the NAACP convention in Detroit. Uh, I'm Julian Castro, and I'm running for president because I believe that we need new energy with a new vision for the future of our country because I believe that we need a country where everybody counts, where everybody has a place at the table. And over the last six months, I've been articulating a vision for the future of our country where we become, in the 21st century, the smartest, the healthiest, the fairest, and the most prosperous nation on Earth. And I haven't been afraid to be bold and fearless in the face of a president who is the biggest identity politician to come along in the last 50 years, trying to divide us along racial and ethnic and religious lines. I want for the United States to be a place where no matter the color of your skin or your background, how much money you have or don't have, that you're able to fully realize your dreams. I come from a family with an immigrant grandmother and a mother who was part of the Mexican-American Civil Rights Movement, who was a hellraiser when she was young that understands that it's not enough for us to just talk about progress. We actually have to work to make it. That's what I did as mayor of San Antonio to try and transform the east side of the city into one that had more prosperity for the people living there. That's what I did as Secretary of Housing and Urban Development, passing the most groundbreaking rule called affirmatively furthering fair housing so that we could seconds. further desegregate communities across this country. And that's what I'll do if I'm elected President of the United States. And I look forward to a conversation today about that. Thank you very much. Time for Q&A. Secretary Castro, you were the first candidate in this round of presidential candidates to come out with a black agenda. Why? Because I think it's important that, uh, especially the black community that too often times has been discriminated against, that has been left behind. I saw this growing up in San Antonio, and I did the same thing as mayor. The first thing I did in San Antonio was that I began working with leaders on the east side of the city to try and make sure that we had opportunity everywhere in San Antonio. So um, I've chosen to go to Flint. I was the first candidate to go to Flint uh, and to say that we need to put forward resources to eliminate lead as a major public health threat. Uh, I was the first, and I think only so far, candidate to put forward a police reform plan. Because we saw just a few days ago with the case of Eric Garner that too often times, if you're especially a young black man in this country, that you're treated differently at the hands of police. And my police reform plan would create more accountability and transparency by setting a national use of force standard that says that you, an officer has to exhaust all other reasonable alternatives before they use legal force. Uh, it, would, it would also demilitarize our police because we've been giving these military weapons to our police equipment and it's creating over-aggressiveness. I would work with Congress to do away with racial profiling, with stop and frisk. Uh, and also, my education plan says that we should not have cops in schools that are enforcing discipline, because too often times they're enforcing it in a biased way, especially against young black men. So I'm proud to have an agenda that I believe um, is resonating with uh, the black community because it's substantive and it's based on the work that I've done before. The Trump administration has reduced focus on monitoring and preventing white nationalist domestic terrorism. How would you change that practice as president? Well, I would go in the other direction. I mean, what we see is that, I mean, clearly, I mean, look at all of these incidents that are happening out there, right? Um, we've seen the rise of white nationalism and this identity politics of the alt-right that the president is stoking, that he's building his political career on, right? I mean, that's what's happening in America today, just to be clear about it. So I would make sure that the Department of Justice is focused on rooting that out and prosecuting individuals who engage 
in that type of activity, whether it's low-level criminal activity or more serious criminal activity, and taking it seriously throughout the administration. As president, would you support the passage of the anti-lynching law? Now, modern-day example is that of the dragging death of James Byrd. Of course I would. Of course I would. Um, we see that, that uh, too often times, even now in the United States, crimes that should be categorized as hate crimes um, may not be treated that way. I want to ensure that they are and that we take uh, all of these crimes as seriously as they should be, should be taken. The gentrification fight um, is huge. Uh, you have those who profit off of it and those who lose out. How would you balance the dynamic of fixing up communities, fixing infrastructure, uh, building communities back, but also helping the low income and the unfortunate? I think that you have to do two things. First of all, you know, as HUD Secretary, Housing Secretary, I visited a lot of places, New Orleans, here in Detroit, uh, Flint, a number of other communities, and I actually heard two things. I heard from people, number one, a lot of people who grew up in neighborhoods that sometimes those neighborhoods have been looked down upon, but they say, this is where I'm from. I want to be able to stay in my neighborhood. I want to be a part of, you know, it becoming a neighborhood that has better streets and drainage and better amenities, but I want to be able to stay here. So one part of our policy has to make it, uh, has to make uh, people be able to stay in those neighborhoods if they want to stay in there. That means programs that are focused on ensuring uh, that the rising costs of rent don't move people out, uh, working with local governments so that they can buffer people against that. The other part of it, though, is for folks that want to move into other neighborhoods that they've been locked out of traditionally. At HUD, we were working through affirmatively furthering fair housing to ensure that people could actually move into those neighborhoods too, because you all know that too often times people are still blocked based on the color of their skin from being able to live in certain places. We need to fix that too. So the way that I look at that is you need to give people options based on what they want to do. And that's what I would be focused on in my housing program as president. You just mentioned Flint, Michigan. Flint is not alone. There are many cities across this nation where water is unsafe to drink. How much of a priority would that play in your administration if you became president to fix that problem, not just only just make the levels acceptable, but to fix the problem, to include infrastructure changes? You know, I've put forward a plan to make sure that lead is no longer a major public health threat that includes money for infrastructure like the infrastructure issue that we saw in Flint, uh, and especially would target communities that are vulnerable communities that have often been left behind. And the thing is that we need to put resources into it. This is not a, an issue that local governments or state governments are going to be able to solve on their own. And so my plan does that. It puts billions of dollars into alleviating that issue. How can the nation pay its bills without raising taxes? Well, I think that part of the answer is that we're going to have to raise taxes. Mm. Uh, and we're going to begin by repealing and replacing the Trump tax cuts. Uh, I, don't, I think for the last 40 years, for the last 40 years, we've been asking more and more of people who are middle class and working poor and poor, and less and less of people that are doing very well and people at the very top. So I would raise the top marginal tax rate. I would close these loopholes that lobbyists over the years of special interests have worked into the tax code. I would look for creative ways to raise revenue. For instance, the National Housing Trust Fund is funded with a transaction fee on Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Um, every time there's a transaction, a little bit of money goes into a fund that's, that's aimed at uh, creating housing for extremely low-income individuals, basically individuals that make less than 30% of the area median income in a community. Those are the kinds of creative ways that I would look at more revenue so that we can do what we need to do to ensure that everybody can prosper in our country. And now you're closing, sir. All right. Well, thank you, April. And, um, you know, I know what it's like to grow up and to struggle, to grow up in a single-parent household. I'm a proud product of the public schools of Texas. And I also know what it's like to be able to achieve my dreams, to get to go to college and to law school and be the first in my family to be a professional as an attorney. And that's what I want for every single person in this country.
that we're able to make sure that everybody is able to get a good education, that they're able to reach their dreams, that they're able to provide for their family, to pay the rent, to prosper in our nation. And what we're facing now is a president that wants to take us backward. I don't want to make America anything again. I don't want to go backward. I want to go forward. I want to make us better than we've ever been in the future. And that, of course, that, of course, includes the black community in America that has too often been left behind. I know that when I was a city councilman, when I was a mayor, when I was HUD secretary, I've worked directly with the black community to try and ensure that everybody can prosper. And I want you to know that if I'm elected president, that I will work in the same way with you to ensure that you and your family can prosper too. Gracias. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Secretary Julian Castro. Candidate number five.